What's going on, Chemical Guys family? Thanks so much for tuning in for today's episode of Detail Garage. As you see here, we have this beautiful black BMW, and it's in the shop because we're gonna give it a routine wash, which is a common question we get, when to wash the vehicle, what soap to use, and how to properly do it. So today we're gonna get started by showing you the proper ins and outs of how to pick a soap, and also what's gonna work best for you. So let's get started. So most of you guys who wash your car on a regular basis want something that's going to be easy enough to gently remove abrasive particles from the surface while also being safe for your coatings. And this vehicle is no different from the rest. So it's got a ceramic coating as well as a layer of glaze and sealant on it. So we want a soap that's going to enhance it but safely remove anything that's on the surface, which is why we're choosing to use our Hybrid V7. This is an awesome soap to lay down a very thick layer of suds which help to lubricate the surface. And what that means is it's going to glide abrasive particles of dirt, bird droppings, sand, everything off of the surface without scratching the paintwork. It's also safe for your ceramic coatings as well as any kind of glaze, sealant, or wax. And it's also going to enhance the depth and gloss of your vehicle. So in front of us, we have our two bucket methods set up already, as well as our big mouth foam cannon. And we're just going to show you how to properly set all this up. So in front of us, we have two dirt traps. And if you're unfamiliar with what these are or you're not using them, basically what these are are wash filtration filters. And as you rub your wash mitt or your sponge against the face of the dirt trap, that's going to force abrasive particles and grime underneath those cones. And it's going to keep it off the vehicle as well as from floating around in your clean water. And this further reduces the chances of bringing that dirt back to the vehicle where it could potentially scratch it. So now we're also going to add a little bit of our Hybrid V7 soap to one of the buckets. You can use either one. And then we'll also add it to our foam cannon. Just a couple of ounces. And then we'll reattach the top and start mixing the solution. And then by using more than two, two to three ounces is going to give you that thicker layer of foam. And I'm just stirring the solution together rather than shaking it up where it could potentially cause the foam inside of the bottle or the canister. And that's going to reduce its aeration, which reduces its foam thickness. But by stirring it up together, it'll properly foam as you press that trigger, laying down that thick layer of suds on the vehicle. So to begin, we're gonna use our pressure washer to start rinsing it down from top to bottom, hitting all of those horizontal planes where all the abrasive particle tends to land. And then we'll move on to the foaming process using our foam cannon. So as you guys saw, we just finished rinsing down the vehicle. And while we were rinsing down, I thought of a couple questions that a lot of you guys ask us. And a couple of those are, what pressure washer we use or what amount of PSI do we use? And typically you wanna use something between 1200 and 3500 PSI. It really doesn't matter the brand or the model pressure washer you use because when it comes down to it, it's typically your preference or your budget that allows what kind of pressure washer you're gonna use. You can use a gas or an electric pressure washer, but preferably, you know, it's down to your own preferences. And also, as you were watching, we were rinsing it down with a barrier of about 18 inches to maybe two feet of the space between the vehicle and the tip of the pressure washer. And that's going to ensure that we're not hurting any seals or potentially damaging the paintwork. Because all we're using the pressure washer for is to rinse away the heavier debris, as well as lay down a thick layer of suds and then rinse away that foam. So now with that being said, we're going to activate the suds in our bucket and then we're gonna move on to the foaming process as well as using our wash mitt to help glide away any abrasive particles using a linear motion. This is going to help reduce the chances of introducing any kind of swirls or scratches. And then we're gonna move on to the final rinse and then drying process. Now we're moving on to the actual washing process of the vehicle. A lot of guys ask us, can they just rinse it and foam it and then rinse it again? And that's typically okay as long as your car has just a very fine layer of dust on there, maybe just recently rained or something like that. But for your average daily driver where it has caked on dust and grime, you wanna come back with your wash mitt or your sponge and then go across the vehicle, gliding away any kind of abrasive particles and filth. And the same process as we rinse it and foamed, we're gonna start at the top, working in linear motions and just start gliding away those pieces of filth. I like to work from the center out, this way I'm not reaching across the vehicle too much. And then as I'm wiping, I'm rolling the wash mitt, which creates a fresh edge. But you can just see the awesome foaming power of Hybrid V7. Even on a car that's ceramic coated, the entire vehicle is ceramic coated, the windshield as well, 
the soap still clings to the surface and that's going to give you that lubricating power that you need so you don't scratch your finish of your vehicle whether it's ceramic coated or not this helps gently glide away filth and debris for the ultimate wash now typically your wash mitt or your sponge is going to start to get dirty pretty quickly so that's why we have our second bucket and it's clear so we can show you just what we're doing here we're going to push the wash mitt all the way to the bottom against the face of the dirt trap and this helps to release any abrasive particles this way we're not bringing it back to the car we're just going to wring it out on the ground and by wringing it out on the ground this further prevents the chances of us bringing that filth back to the vehicle So again, you can use Hybrid V7 in your favorite foam cannon, foam gun, or just traditional wash bucket to give your car the ultimate wash and scratch-free finish. And again, it's safe for any kind of glaze, sealant, waxes, and even your ceramic coatings. It helps enhance your gloss and depth without damaging or degrading any kind of coatings. Typically, as you work your way around the vehicle, you're going to see that certain areas are going to be dirtier than others. Now, normally we start with the wheels because obviously that's going to have the most brake dust and road grime. And also your flat panels that are exposed to constant sunlight and also things landing on the surface. Those are going to be much dirtier as well. But also the lower panels, like your rocker panels and all that things, that collects a lot of the road grime, tar, road paint, and all other kinds of filth. Which is why I recommend working around in layers, almost like an onion. Starting at the top and then just gently working your way all the way to the bottom. And this is going to be your final pass. This way, you don't bring any kind of really abrasive pieces or grime to the rest of the vehicle where it could really potentially scratch the surface. But same way, we're just going to work in linear motions, wiping away any of the filth for the perfect shine. Lastly, we need to dry the vehicle, and we're going to be using one of our favorite microfiber drying towels, and that's our Woolly Mammoth. This traps a lot of water, which means that you're not going to be going over with multiple passes trying to pick up those last water spots, but also it's very plush, which means you're not going to be scratching the surface. And that silk banded edge ensures that you're not going to induce any kind of swirls or scratches as you do your final passes. Now, luckily, it's fairly overcast today, which means that we don't need to rush the drying process, which means we can be extra thorough and make sure we don't have any kind of last drops or any kind of streaks. But also since we're using deionized water, that also ensures that we're not leaving any kind of hard water stains, which are really tough to get out, especially if they sit on the surface and then bake, where you need to come back with like a water spot remover or potentially polish the vehicle. And this is great for your sensitive paintwork. Simply pat it and then wipe it away, or pull it away rather. And this ensures they're not creating any kind of scratches or swirls for again that scratch-free finish. So guys, I'm gonna tackle the rest of the drying process on this vehicle, but if you guys enjoyed today's video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, drop your comments down below for any future videos or anything you guys wanna talk about. And you can also check out these products on our website, chemicalguys.com or your local detail garage, and we'll see you guys next time.